you have like a Not? Oh, okay. Um <noise> Okay, you you might be able to teach me a thing or two. <laughs> okay, so um so well why um do I see the you know the, the need to talk about this? I, I didn't uh, see a need to talk about this until I actually tried um, setting up a virtual environment in my enterprise <laughs> in my enterprise uh, you know <coughs> ma machine so we we write um, am amazing scripts and tools right we use all sorts of um, interesting libraries and uh, and of course we want to share these <coughs> um, tools with our colleagues but then in order for them to use uh, your scripts, they would need to download uh, all, all the um, dependencies that, that you use, like um, your, your Flask, um, you know, uh, yeah, name, name me some, some other things, right? I, I see people nod, nodding here, right? So this is um, a, a point we have in common. And, <clears throat> you know, um, so the environment also gets in, in the way. The standard installations do not uh, provide you with um, the the ability to run a script um, by you know by anyone at anywhere. So uh, usually the environment would be very um, customized to you only. And when somebody else tries to run, all, all sorts of hell breaks loose. And <coughs> you you get all sorts of uh, errors. Right? Okay, so um, oh your tool sucks, right? <laughs> Right, so um, Python vir virtual land, uh, virtual environments are good. They come to the rescue, uh, so so that you do not um, have to, uh, well, install everything as as the root user or to pollute the, the system you know, installation, which of course your company sysadmin would not allow you to do, unless you are the sysadmin. But that is another, uh, that is another story, right? <coughs> So, um, so the, the idea of this, uh, the talk today is to discuss <coughs> um, some of the mo motivations and pitfalls right, uh, that can happen, um, that happen to, to me um, during my uh, work with uh, Virtual Line and some of the possible solutions that we uh, can, can do. <coughs> so, um, what, what is the scope here? Um, so we're, we're assuming here you, you have an enterprise computing environment, you, um, you have a central um, corporate you know, um, sysadmin that manages a cluster of machines that you absolutely have no uh, root access to, right? and um, they maintain a standard installation, and also they have uh, GCC, um, G++, uh, development headers, li libraries, um, stuff that you need for uh, well, to, to compile, right? <coughs> so, and uh, if you have your own, um, you know, uh, virtual machine, you have full root access, uh, everything, so uh, this is probably not, uh, you know, <laughs> suitable for, uh, for, for you, but, you know, you can learn something along um, <coughs> the way here. So, and um, of course, uh, over here, we, we also use a lot of our cloud-based um, machines. And actually, the, uh, the central infra team, <coughs> infrastructure team manages those as well. Um, they configure, they in, um, install testing images on, on them, right? so that you always uh, spin, spin up and do a rapid deploy. Um, everything is wiped clean um, every single time. So guess what you have to do every time you want to run your script? <laughs> You have to uh, do all the setup again. <coughs> yeah. Um, some sometimes you can say, oh, but I can just uh, do do a setup in my home directory. But guess guess what? Uh, <laughs> your home directories are not shared onto those machines. <coughs> so pitfalls. <coughs> you need to download virtual VM, right? So. And you need to do that on a regular basis because, like we've mentioned, uh, the machines can get wiped out on a very regular basis. And uh, do you actually remember the URL 
to download the scripts. <coughs> Incomplete installations, uh, the versions are outdated. You, you need a newer version of uh, Django, but the sysadmin has an older version and they don't see the need. Uh, why do I have to um, up, update it to, to you know, suit you? I have um, 2,000 other guys to take care of, right? And uh, amazingly, some installations don't have pip or setup tools, uh, which VirtualENV actually uh, has a, an implied um, dependency on. So again, an, another uh, obstacle in, in a way. So uh, and get pip itself, uh, if you have been through it, has its own set of problems. <coughs> and yeah. Some, some setup scripts uh, require unit tests. Uh, sounds weird, but that's, that's the way it is, right? Uh, and apparently, some sysadmins uh, do not think that the unit test module is important for, for their enterprise-wide uh, install. So you're on your own. So any of these um, happening will uh, sort of take the kick out, out of whatever script you, you can write, because then it basically renders. Uh, all your effort uh, you know, moves. <coughs> right. Out of date uh, CA bundles, and uh, especially I think this is a problem with PIP but that can be uh, improved upon in, in the future. And of course, the last point when you have uh, no pseudo or root permissions, all of the above will remain problems. <coughs> so, why not compile your own? Uh, believe me, I have gone down that path. Uh, I almost died trying. <laughs> right? Um, it's the download is good, right? Configure, compile, okay. Come back after lunch. Oops, and you see, uh, you see the picture at, at the end. So so many standard things are not available. You need SSL. You need Zlib. You need uh, cursors. You need you need SQL Lite. Right. So. Uh, you are much better off uh, with a, a pre-compiled, um, you know, uh, distribution, <coughs> right? So this, the configuration, compilation, and maintenance will be a huge headache uh, for for you going forward. Can you imagine telling your colleague, "Oh, you need to do this: download, configure, install, and install"? Right? They'll they'll switch off faster than you can say switch off. Of course, uh, you have to give your sysadmins some credit. Right? <laughs> they have done a lot of hard work to maintain or to standardize the operating environment for everybody. So uh, install the development headers. <coughs> so leverage on what they have right? and utilize yeah, as, as much as you can. But then we just have to install our own dependencies. <coughs> so. Um, <coughs> Virtual land. It's um, the setup itself is easier than uh, uh, download and com compile, but it is still quite involved because now, what's the URL again? Okay, <coughs> I know you can't remember. I I can't, right? Uh, and no no pip no setup tools. The CA bundle is not up to date, right? So you have to do all these things manually. Uh, you have to uh, Google, search, and you know, read up the instructions. And imagine doing this 10, 15 times a, a month, or maybe a day. Not sure what you do there. Right, so it uh, actually can get quite painful. So um, the, the, the way I... Uh, <coughs> Handle this problem was to um, get, gather all the you know the common dependencies. What what do I need? Right, I need to install virtual life. I need the get pip script. So uh, I I use the basic the base common denominator a, a make file. You can use your own um, build system um, whatever you you want. Uh, so <coughs> um, put put all these all, all the actions in inside your your make file. And um, along the way, different systems will have uh, different missing um, dependencies. So 
a, a, a single a single shell script to like do everything might not work because um, you are going to try to override some um, you know things that are already installed. So that there's no point. <clears throat> so get some helper scripts. Uh, put everything. We have an enterprise GitHub, but uh, you can also do your own um, private uh, GitHub re repo. Or um, whichever, or just put it in source control, right? Wh whichever one you use. Right. And have a, a bootstrap um, script to to do the um, the fetching and downloading. Right. I I do this. I, I keep this uh, bootstrap script in in, in a gist. <coughs> oh, this was uh okay. So, this. Um, bootstrapping, right? So I uh, download my my gist, and uh, <coughs> you can download it into. It, it is a shell script, so you download it, save it as as a file, and run and run the script, right? Uh, but you still need to um, remember a long URL. Right? To me, anything more than ten characters is is long. So. Uh, what, what do you do? Use a URL uh, re redirector, a shortener. Um, over here we have an internal <coughs> um, we have an internal tool for that. It's called uh, go, right? go slash whatever as if you can grab um, if someone else has not already grabbed the, 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 um, the path, you, you can get it and uh, redirect that to your, your script. Right? So go high setup. Right? It's uh, much easier. Uh, it's especially easy for when, when you are trying to get other people to install, um, to set up the environment. Right? <coughs> because people always switch off when you try to get them to follow instructions. Yes. Yeah. I, I see some um, acknowledgement there. <coughs> so um, the, the, the one liner, right, go um, curl, go pi setup, and type it to bash. Uh, it's inspired by the, the Docker um, in install, uh, if you are familiar with that. Um, I, I think it's a very neat way of uh, you know, getting, uh, you know, getting install scripts to work because you know, it's just a one-liner, not, nothing to download. And after you download, oh, where's the script? I can't find it. It says found, not found. <coughs> so um, one. One surprising thing that uh, got me stuck for a while was uh, apparently pip um, bundles a uh, some versions of pip may, maybe they it bundles uh, an outdated version of uh, the this, uh, CA certs right and so you you will get um, problems trying to use pip to install anything because the cert verification fails. Uh, and you, you can't you can't proceed at, at all. <coughs> so I, I gather this may not be a huge problem for for many people here, but uh, it is amazing what I run into <laughs> sometimes. So uh, the way I got around it was I I, I found out okay um, who is the issuer is uh, is DigiCert. So I got the um, I downloaded the the CA from DigiCert, converted it to a PEM format, uh, and bundled it in in my in my repo. So apparently, uh, <coughs> if you look at the two um, the links on, on on top, right, it's actually quite a common issue. Um, a lot of people are facing cert um, errors in in their office environment, right? Um, connecting to uh, IP. So the, so we talked about um, mi missing mo modules. So we it is really quite um, well. It's a very simple dependency, but then it's annoying enough, right? A, a missing unit test that you totally do not need, but again, it's needed by some set of script. Um, by something you do need, right? Uh, it's re really annoying, but then <laughs> you kind of um, 
instead of shouting at your sysadmin, you, you could you could ask them to install it um, <coughs> system wide, and they will probably ask you to file two hundred tickets in the process, uh, or you you solve it yourself um, well, by um, downloading and installing it. Right. So that's how uh, that's how it goes, and of course. Yep, <coughs> we're at our last slide. In you see it in ac action. Uh, so a, a simple, a simple one one liner um, to run the <coughs> install to run the install script. You see what what it does, and at the end of it, you will get um, you get into the the uh, the environment you you just built, right? So this. This is actually very helpful when um, you do need to do this on, on a regular basis for different projects. Right? You want um, a virtual isolated environments for, for different projects with different dependencies. Right? So, uh, I, I personally, I have a, I have a common um, environment where I, I use it every day, but uh, for <clears throat> for one-off projects, I, I still find this, I still do this quite a lot right? because uh, testing machines always get wiped out and you always need new new stuff uh, uh, to, to get installed on them. Uh, so I guess that's, uh, that's it. Um, any, uh, do you have any questions? Is so one way we I used virtual environment in one of my previous projects was that we used our personal, I mean our own computers, development boxes, to package a virtual environment with all the site packages, so, and then we just zipped up and copied over to Parallel SSH to to a cluster or something. And then when you open it up, you have all your requirements. You don't need and you can directly run if you can directly point to the file. So you don't even need to install it. So how how would you compare that with uh, method Ah uh, yes, that actually has um has a merit. I'm I'm also uh, I would use that to complement this technique as well because <coughs> for example, this thing, what the, the screenshot I, I just showed, right? Is on a Mac. Right? I can build this on my Mac, but I obviously cannot um, send this over to my Linux machine. Get it? And uh, on different Linux machines, right? If your company happens to use um, a different version of uh, Linux for something and another version for something else, right? Uh, you are going to have a bit of uh, trouble trying to get the same, uh, you know, bundle package to work everywhere. So, uh, it's useful yeah, if, yeah, path or li library uh, dependencies. Sometimes uh, modules need to get compiled, uh, the the C the C modules. So, um, they do not, uh, you know, they they do not work um, seamlessly across different platforms. So that's where uh, the that's where you still need to build the environment um, again to to some to some degree. Of course, the other way is you can freeze. Uh, the you can freeze the binary, right? But that again has um, well has an environment issue. Question. Yeah. Uh, so uh, unit test was called PyUnit unit uh, before two thousand one. Two thousand one, Python version two point one is called introduced into standard models. Uh -huh. You cannot miss it in a standard Python installation since two point one. Uh, I just yeah yeah thanks. Unless you see that means explicitly find slash unit test remove. So on on our development machines, uh, it's okay. But on our testing machines, uh, it, that's where they kind of uh, left it out. So so is this so one thing I know in so enterprise systems uh, usually are way behind in terms of uh, like uh, what's the current stables. Yes yes. I used, I, got, I used to use like Python 2.4 or something. 
we were still on 2.4 like one and a half years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, two, two years back. So it was about a year and a half back that uh, now we are on 2.7. Yeah. Which, which is really a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, the good thing is 2.79 actually includes the virtual bank and everything as a part of some important. Mm, yep, yep. Yep, so, so I, I, I guess I'm just unlucky. Well, you have to solve the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> CPU sharing, whatever. I mean, it will run as a what would you call that? Uh, run as an uh, as fast as your your normal install. How virtual support? You can put this and just Consider using Docker rather than uh, uh, try to uh, reduce your, your scope to Python, and then uh, using Docker images, you might be able to uh, to get uh, uh, a nice uh, development environment shared among all developers on your project, and then uh, uh, it would be a more uh, generalizable than just Python. And you will have little, little uh, performance in that bit also. That's another way to go. Yeah. In fact, we, we should, we can and should use uh, both um, Docker and, and virtual land. Yeah, inside yeah. the... Uh, yeah. Has anyone used things like X from Twitter? <coughs> we do the same thing. So, Twitter does a similar thing like virtual app, you can package your, your Python environment into like a kind of zip file and then just ship it and run, just like, like what GVM does, roughly. So there's also no, like it's all self-contained uh, uh, binary blob that has everything that you need. That's easy to ship to, 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 your, to, your, to your machines. That's another way of uh, solving this problem. Yeah, um, if if you are shipping like you know um, production code on a commercial basis, then yeah, uh, we we definitely want to have have the whole whole package. So I, I guess where where this is more applicable is for uh, you know um, development environments where we still can kind of uh, afford to uh, down download and um, in, install stuff. But so take the pain out of uh, doing it, you know, over and over. Ah, yes. Within minor versions of Python, I suppose it's possible. You just need to name your binary as Python 2.7. something or 2.6. something. And when you create your virtual environment, you, you give a path to your executable, and that will be your Python when you switch to this virtual environment. Even without Python 3.7 installed? Well, you, you still need to install okay. your binaries somewhere. Okay. But, but I, you can easily I, switch. Oh, oh you have installed binary somewhere. I guess your question is, uh, if you have Python 2.6, 2. or 2.6, can can you use virtual life to like say Python 2.7? Yeah, to point to 2.7. I, I think you you still need uh, installation of 2.7 somewhere. Yeah. But then uh, a virtual, uh, then you have different virtual environments um, using uh, because virtual environments do do not actually have um, 
you know, the, the, the full binaries, they're, they're actually <coughs> um, pointing to some existing binary. So if you want different versions, you do need the, the versions to be installed some, somewhere. if you're trying to have multiple versions of IAM installed is IAM, which will help you. When you type IAM install 2.6.6, install 2.6.6, IAM 3.4.2, or whatever it is, and make it available. It has a virtual end module, so you can, it can help you out. It is really neat. Huh? Uh, together with talks, you can test all your stuff in all the environments. So you get 2.6, 2.7, 3.3, 3.4. All your code hopefully works when the test is passed. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, <coughs> so uh, your, your question is whether the, you can switch between different so OS? I think the, the short answer is uh, no, because you still need to um, build the uh, the environment on, I mean, you need to build the environment on, on top of uh, the specific system. So if you have already built one system, <coughs> I mean, built one environment on one system, you can't uh, use the same files on, on another. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, okay. Thank you.